dear students now we are going to discuss a very dangerous disease in neurology called as gbs the term gbs we will try to elaborate on what it is it is otherwise called as gillian barre syndrome it is the most severe form of polyneuropathy which a person can develop so polyneuropathy means it is comes in the lmn part so the nerves are all lmn lower motor neuron it is an acute form of polyneuropathy and it is an ascending type of polyneuropathy so it starts in the legs and ascend to the trunk and then to the upper limb so it is an ascending polyneuropathy so it's a rapidly progressive flaccid quadriplegia quadriplegia means patients all four limbs and body becomes weak so it's a rapidly progressive flaccid quadriplegia it progresses over 4 weeks or less less than 4 weeks and is potentially fatal how is it potentially fatal it is by the respiratory muscle paralysis or an autonomic nervous system involvement and the mortality was so high in the earlier days but now with good icu care and ventilator support the mortality rate has come down to less than 5% so gillen barre were the persons who described that and under the types of gbs we have four types one is aidp second is aman aman third is amsan and fourth is mfs mfs is miller fisher syndrome so all these are really scary terms and scary full forms are also there but all these full forms will carry the message what is the pathology which is actually happening so we will try to decode the uh, short forms which we have currently told so what is this aidp so aidp acute so the disease is acute i is inflammatory so there is an inflammation so the pathogenesis is inflammation d demyelinating and polyradiculoneuropathy what is this difference between a polyneuropathy and a radiculoneuropathy radical means root from the root downwards the nerves are damaged that is called radiculoneuropathy so aidp is the most common form of gbs acute inflammatory demyelinating so the nerves lose the myelin that is why it is called demyelinating now if we go to the second one what is this aman acute motor axonal neuropathy here we did not call it as demyelinating we called it as axonal so it is an acute motor axonal neuropathy because the axon is the problem the initial one the myelin was the problem so it is demyelinating the second one the axon is the problem now we go to the third one here it is not motor it is motor and sensory axonal and the last one is miller fisher syndrome in miller fisher syndrome is a variety of gbs where the disease even though it's a neuropathy it doesn't come with weakness of limbs rather than that see the findings one is the eye movements are the first to be paralyzed ataxia is a feature and areflexia is the feature so the weakness of limbs is not a feature of miller fisher syndrome but ophthalmoplegia ataxia and areflexia are the important features coming to the epidemiology of gbs any age can be affected child can be affected old people can be affected. any age is affected in gbs males and females are equally affected in gbs 50% of them may give a history of recent infection so when you take history in gbs always ask them did you have a recent respiratory infection did you have a recent diarrheal disease or an exanthematous febrile illness what do you mean by exanthem rash a fever with rash so ask the history of uh, respiratory illness diarrheal disease or an exanthematous febrile illness in any person coming with features of gbs so these are the triggers a viral exanthematous fever a respiratory infection a diarrheal disease especially by this organism campylobacter jejuni sometimes post vaccinal gbs can be there you take a vaccination patient after 2 to 3 uh, weeks may develop gillen barre like presentation hiv infection in the sero conversion phase person may develop gbs lymphoma can manifest as gbs so when a person comes with gbs 
you should also be considering such underlying disease like HIV, lymphoma, a recent vaccination, recent diarrheal or respiratory disease. Like that you have to analyze the history. Why all these diseases lead to GBS? How such simple often self-limiting disease like respiratory disease or a diarrheal disease can lead to a catastrophic fatal disease like GBS? The mechanism is called the antigenic mimicry. You might have heard these terms being used in rheumatic fever, antigenic mimicry. The antibodies which are formed against the organisms, vaccine gives an antigen, the diseases can give an antigen. So the body will produce its own antibodies. The antibodies which are produced against the vaccine or the organism will react with the antigens in myelin or the axon, cross reaction. So it is actually a cross reaction which leads to inflammation and damage. So this phenomenon is called antigenic mimicry and there are two types of Guillain-Barre. One is which targets the myelin called as demyelination and another one which targets the axon within the myelin, the axon called as the axonal type of GBS. So there are two types, a demyelinating type and an axonal type. The demyelinating type is mainly by the T lymphocytes and macrophages. So the cellular attack is responsible for the demyelinating type, while the axonal type is mainly by the IgG antibodies. This is the pictorial representation of the GBS type. In demyelinating type, the uh, complement cascade will act against the myelin and the axon will be lost. The axon will lose the myelin, axon will lose the insulation. So the transmission through the axon will be affected. While in the axonal type, even the axonal integrity will be lost. So which would be more dangerous? Definitely we know that the axon is the fundamental structure which has to transmit the neuron. If it is damaged, then there is no turning back. It is total destruction. So axonal types have a bad prognosis compared to the demyelinating types. What are the symptoms of AIDP? AIDP, we already told, it is the most common type of GBS. Let will see how the patient presents to us. The people usually start to develop symmetric lower limb pins and needle paresthesia and numbness in the feet. It slowly ascends up over hours to days. It progresses to buckling of knee. Buckling means what? When the patient walks, the knee may give way and the patient may fall down on the knees. That is because of weakness of the quadriceps muscle in the anterior thigh. So buckling of knee can be there. Chapel slipping, it is because of foot muscle weakness. Patient can't hold a chapel firmly onto the feet. The chapels may slip away from the feet. And the patient may develop progressive paraplegia. Paraplegia is weakness of legs. Initially, later on they become quadriplegic, weak upper limbs and lower limbs over days. The persons can also develop a bilateral facial nerve palsy. So because of facial nerve palsy, the face will lose its movement. So the whole limbs, all four limbs along with the face may be paralyzed in a severe form of AIDP. As the disease worsens over hour to day, hours to days, Patients may develop a bulbar weakness. What do you mean by bulbar weakness? Patient may develop dysphagia, choking on swallowing, weak cough, dysphonia and dysarthria. Then the neck may flop down like this. Respiratory failure can be there due to paralysis of diaphragm and intercostal muscles. At that time, we have to have the patient in the ICU and we may have to ventilate the patient. And the last point, the autonomic dysfunction, extremely important. Even though the respiratory muscle is an important cause for fatality, the autonomic dysfunction which can produce swings in blood pressure and swings in heart rate can rapidly kill patients because sudden fatal arrhythmias may happen from the heart and the patient may die because of that. After the symptoms, now we will go to the signs of Guillain-Barre syndrome. While examining, what do we see? Patients are lying with quadriplegia. The tone is low, hypotonia, areflexia, plantar is often absent or flexor, facial palsy will be there, 
bilateral element facial palsy, reduced vibration in the feet, shallow rapid breathing with a low single breath count, swings in blood pressure and heart rate. So these are the different signs which we have to look for. The last two signs which I have mentioned are very dangerous. If you see a person with a rapid shallow breathing or swing in BP and heart rate, that definitely means that the, fatal, the fatality chance is high. What are the investigations we perform in a case of GBS? The two most important investigations, the first one is the nerve conduction study to know whether it is GBS and to differentiate whether it is demyelinating or axonal. The second most important investigation is doing a lumbar puncture, get the CSF sample for analysis, CSF study. First we go to the nerve conduction study. The prime indication is Guillain-Barre syndrome and what do you see in a demyelinating type? There will be slowing of conduction velocity, prolonged distal latency and conduction block. These are the three findings which you get in a demyelinating type. But if it is an axonopathic type, it will have amplitude of the compound muscle action potential will become low. So the velocity comes down in demyelinating type while the amplitude comes down in axonopathic type. That is the basic difference in nerve conduction findings between demyelinating and axonal. The CSF study, the classical albuminocytologic dissociation in exams, this is a very important question. What is this albuminocytological dissociation? This is the classical CSF examination finding in Guillain-Barre syndrome. You have a high protein in the CSF. Normal protein is around 20 to 45 milligram per deciliter. A high level of protein in the CSF, usually we expect a high level of cells also. But in GBS, you don't get much elevation of cells. That is why it is called albumino cytological dissociation. Albumin rises but cells don't rise. That is called albuminocytological dissociation. The last sentence, the disproportionate elevation in protein without much cell increase is what you call as albuminocytological dissociation considered as a very classical hallmark of Guillain-Barre syndrome. So if you can do a nerve conduction study and a CSF study, you have your diagnosis at your hand. Now how do you treat this patient? The two most important therapies available for GBS, both are difficult and costly. The first one is IV immunoglobulins or you can give the patient plasma exchange. The doctor can select which one he wants. Both are equally effective, so any of them you can choose. What is IV immunoglobulin? Therapeutic IV immunoglobulin is capable of neutralizing the neuropathogenic antibodies in GBS. You know that the GBS has many neuropathogenic antibodies which are running in the system and damaging the myelin or the axon. So when you give this IV immunoglobulin, it will neutralize the neuropathogenic antibodies in GBS by a dose dependent antibody mediated mechanism. Plasma exchange, how does it work? What is plasma? The liquid portion of the blood is called plasma. It is removed and separated from the blood cells. So it passes through, the blood is taken and it passes through a machine and the blood cells are removed from plasma. The blood cells go back to the body but the plasma will be removed and the body will produce its own plasma or uh, extrinsic you can give them intravenous albumin. So plasma exchange, how does it work? It rids away the plasma of antibodies. Plasma has the antibodies. So you have to remove away the plasma which contains the antibodies and you have to give new plasma. The body produces new plasma or you have to give albumin. Supportive care is equally important in GBS. It is not, not that you, have, you can give plasma exchange or you can give IV immunoglobulin and the patient is healed. Patients are usually in the ICU, very severe disease. So supportive care is equally important for these patients. So physiotherapy is important. Heparin is often given to prevent deep vein thrombosis because people are immobile and they may develop DVT. It may proceed to pulmonary embolism which can be rapidly fatal. So heparin is given to prevent deep vein thrombosis. Cardiac monitoring is done for autonomic swings in cardiac rhythm. Bed sore prevention is done by early mobilization 
frequent change of posture you can use a water bed or air bed to keep the back dry and you may have to give ventilatory care what did we discuss through these slides we learned about the most dangerous type of peripheral neuropathy which is an acute form of peripheral neuropathy which is a potentially fatal peripheral neuropathy and it was potentially fatal and by good icu care and also by immunoglobulins and plasma exchange the person uh, person has a higher chance of recovery in these times the common questions which are usually asked in exam about guillain barre syndrome is one we already mentioned what is this albuminocytological dissociation and we also mentioned a variant of gbs called as miller fisher syndrome miller fisher syndrome was ophthalmoplegia ataxia and air reflexes so it's a variant of gbs these two are commonly asked in theory question papers we will also discuss few mcqs which we commonly come across in our question papers one question which is commonly what is the antibody associated in miller fisher syndrome the antibody can be measured from the csf or from blood so which is the antibody associated the choice is anti gm1 gangliocide anti gm1 antibody anti musk antibody anti aquaporin 4 antibody and anti gq1b the answer is the last one the anti gq1b antibody is the correct answer for miller fisher syndrome second mcq which complication is not seen in guillain barre we saw a lot of complications in guillain barre which is not seen in guillain barre aphasia dysautonomia respiratory paralysis and hyponatremia autonomic dysfunction is quite common respiratory paralysis is quite common so we are left with is it aphasia or is it hyponatremia as you know hyponatremia is also very common in guillain barre because of a phenomena called siadh syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion so hyponatremia is also there but aphasia never occurs with gbs aphasia occurs only if the broca's area in the brain is affected it never happens in gbs so aphasia is the answer to this question the last question which is a demyelinating type of polyneuropathy we already mentioned polyneuropathies can be demyelinating or axonal which one is demyelinating miller fisher syndrome aidp aman amsan so the aman is axonal amsan is axonal miller fisher is also axonal so the answer is aidp acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy we had an overview about guillain barre syndrome we will meet in the next session dokumenta